Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. I hope you guys all enjoy. As always, all today's stories are time marked down below. Let's hop in the first one though, and that is in huge news out there because we actually saw a couple days ago, a couple nights ago, actually Olaf Meister back with the FaZe Clan roster practicing, and it's official as of yesterday. Yes, Olaf Meister took to Twitter to first say this and then later on clarify he is back in the FaZe Clan starting roster. And this is absolutely in huge news. If you guys have seen the past few events over the past three to four months that FaZe Clan has actually gone to, they've still done amazing in terms of of course, winning IEM Sydney with uh, Exist in the roster, doing very well with Chrome in the roster as well. Their last result, you know, winning ESL Vela Horizonte and still placing top four at, of course, ESL Cologne. They still did somehow an amazing job as a top tier roster out there without Olaf Meister, and he is now officially back from whatever took him away from his time. We're going to wait for him to maybe come out on Twitter as to maybe what happened and let me clarify the situation if he did end up doing okay. Uh, I, I kind of uh, hinting at what's maybe in the future, hopefully, an announcement for him on what's okay with his family issues. But even more than that, guys, it's just great to see the roster finally back together and the hype around this team. It could not be better timed, as well as E-League Premier coming up. That will be the first event as this full roster does compete in. And if you guys remember 2017 E-League Premier, who won that, it was this exact roster with Olaf Meister in it. So I cannot wait. They're actually back. And Olaf Meister in classic fashion is back right on time, right when the roster needs him. And I cannot wait for the hype around this team to hopefully not die out. And again, you're going to be expected favorite at this event in E-League Premier. Only eight teams there, all of them on screen for all of you. And I have to do have to say, probably Astralis, Navi, FaZe Clan, your top three favorites, and they are by far and away your favorite teams uh, at the event itself. So I cannot wait to see what Olaf Meister does. Of course, he was taking a two to three month break from even playing CSGO. So we'll see if he actually can keep up. He has about two weeks time though to actually get back his practicing time, get back his touch and feel of the game, which I do believe he can still compete in. So I cannot wait to see FaZe Clan's new roster, I guess old roster reunited. And they're already talking about new barbecue places down there in Georgia, which is of course Atlanta, Georgia, where the E-League Premier will be held. So I cannot wait to see the team back together. Olaf Meister is back, guys. Excited. And for those of you who are still waiting for Cold Zero's response to the situation, apparently he did take down his Instagram story last night. Uh, that on screen for all of you does translate to him actually saying he's going to come out with explanations about the entire story. Of course, accusations out there about not only Tark possibly replacing Bolts on MeBR's roster, but on top of that, Cold Zero apparently wanting to leave the roster, or in fact, other information out there from Simple's brother Alexi also saying that apparently it was Fallen who wants to kick Gold's Cold Zero from the roster after the major does conclude. Now, we've already clarified that, of course, that team on the MeBR our roster needs those three players to retain their major spot. So if Cold Zero is actually going to leave that roster, it's going to be after the major, uh, of course, because there's tons of money at the major. There's no way he's going to leave before that. Uh, sticker money, contract money, the major itself. There's just no way he's leaving before then. And I need to clarify right now. I saw countless comments on yesterday's video. Thank you all for the great support. I think we broke 400 comments again. You guys are crazy. I tried to reply to at least a few of them while I was at work, but I do need to clarify as well. And you guys can tell me in the comment section what you want it to be here on this channel in the future. Now, I want you to clarify as as well, I'll show you guys the clip in an interview with CEO of Immortals. He's the Immortals CEO as well as the MeBR CEO, Noah Winston. He owns the entire team, both those organizations as well. He is their chief executive officer. He pronounced it MeBR. Ever since watching the interview, I've seen a lot of comments out there saying, Jake, you say MeBR, it's supposed to be MIBR, and all the analysts and commentators out there are sticking it out with MIBR. Or some of them actually do say MeBR. So you guys can do me a favor. If you really care about it, if it really does bother you, I don't blame you. So if you want me to say MIBR in the future, comment down below MIBR. If you want me to say MEBR in the future, comment down below MEBR, and whatever wins majority, I will actually go in the future and say that. Now, I don't blame you guys if it does bother you. When I first started saying MEBR, I kind of felt stupid too, so feel free to comment down below what you want me to say in the future, but just know this, the owner of both organizations, including the owner of MEBR, he pronounces it MEBR, although if you don't care, just say I don't care. I think we're absolutely open to having uh, multiple games under the, the MeBR brand. Our two requirements are in order to be part of MeBR, you have to be like... And in very sad news for the Heroic situation and for the downfall of the future of Heroic. Now, I don't want to sound too anticlimactic and too, too down in the future. If you guys saw Heroic, who showed up at the European Minor Qualifiers, they were an absent team. They, of course, did not have Rubino in place of him was actually a Cillian. Rubino going through an eye injury, and apparently that eye injury is still bothering him. He came out with Heroic on their official website, and apparently is now gone from that roster for the future and it does seem to be a permanent replacement of him by a Cillian. He was that stand-in player for the European minor and they got 2-0 swept there. They lost both their matches and it was some brutal matches to watch and no offense to a Cillian. Statistically, he was their worst player by a long shot. Now again, they could work it out in the future and hopefully come back to what they were several months ago, but this seems like a pretty big downgrade right now. Rubino being replaced by a Cillian permanently on that roster. Rubino also did clarify, guys, it was his eye injury keeping him back. He has yet to fix that by the end of 
July and hopefully to come back to the CSGO scene sometime soon. Who will it be for though? Likely not heroic and over the past two years this guy has gone through a tremulous uh, outcome of course being kicked from North when that North roster was doing very well back in the day when they were formerly Dignitas. They then got signed by North and he was kind of left off of that deal and then eventually now with heroic he had a very short stint here. Still a very good player out there deserving of some probably some top tier teams. We'll see who he signs with in the future but for now an eye injury is now kept out of professional CSGO player from a full-time contract. And I'm about to get way too excited so for all of you who are not North American fans or get annoyed by me very easily maybe skip this section. We actually have the American closed qualifier going on right now or at least the minor. Uh, sorry forgive me for that slight correction. The minor which means of the eight teams on screen two of them will go through to the face it major qualifiers which pretty much nowadays means the major they will get stickers. So two teams from North America, two teams from Asia, uh, CIS and of course Europe as well will all go to the major qualifier and all of those eight teams who do go will eventually get stickers and Rogue has been clarified as one of them. They actually uh, swept uh, complexity today in a 2-0 sweep and it was absolutely amazing. So dignifying to see two of those players on that team finally go through to the major once again. The first player is of course going to be Kadian. Kadian tweeting out some very emotional things. His mom uh, fighting a disease out there. He had a phone call with her after the game. You guys can see by the tweet they're both in tears and alongside that even more importantly to me personally, we have Hiko returning to the major for the first time ever since 2016 with Liquid, and he has been on the long grinding stone all the way back here. If you guys remember the flack this guy has faced, Kadeen as well, they faced immense flack. You know, Kadeen was the constant go-to player for, to be bounced around as a stand-in player. He spent time with Heroic. He spent time with SK Gaming. Several teams out there, including Rogue, were not really sure if he was going to be a solidified figure on that team, and throughout this entire event, him and Hiko carried the squad itself. They both had miraculous performances, both carry the team, uh, in my own opinion, to this actual major qualifier spot. And it is so cool to see these guys going back to the major. And I cannot wait to see what a roster like this does. Even more importantly, though, this rogue roster, people forget it was actually back in 2016. One of their members, known as Sick, was a rising star. He is still currently, I believe, only 19 years old. Back in 2016, he was an up and rising, uh, up and coming player. Back when he currently played for TSM, he was highly recruited before he went to team like Misfits. And of course, Misfits, that project kind of failed him. So if we can see a 2016 sick return and as well as Hiko and Katie and lead this roster somewhere during the major qualifier these guys have a fairly good shot or at least I'm crossing my fingers at a decent shot to actually make top 16 and go to the official major either way guys I am so excited to see Katie and Hiko through and the rest of the roster for Rogue will eventually be joined by one other American team and it will be the winner of E-United and Complexity and the best of three matchup today at the point of you guys watching this now unfortunately enough as well one of the favorite teams out there especially from a few months ago that is team NRG failed to qualify after being beat by E United and what we could consider probably a pretty big upset there and NRG are actually out of the American minor and they will not be going to the major qualifier which is very unfortunate to see. But you guys know I had to mention I got to give you guys a little sneak peek for all of you guys who are newer fans newer viewers of, of CSGO News and don't know remember the exact history of Kadian I think it was actually I believe back in 2016 for an HTC 1v1 invitational now the year could be wrong but it was HTC's host and if you guys remember they used to invite actual male pros female pros pros of all sorts and tiers to this event and generally it was a very fun environment. It was very fun live stream to watch and they would participate in 1v1s throughout three actual maps. It would be rifle maps and then op maps and if you went to map three it was on pistols and historically it was actually Kadian versus Giuliano formerly of Team Secret. Uh, she hasn't really been playing professional CSGO as frequently as she, as she used to um, but still a very very good female pro out there and she actually managed to beat Kadian in that best of three. It went to pistols and I, I never really realized how well Kadian held himself. I gave him flack in a CSGO news episode a long time for this. I kept bringing it up as a joke but I never really realized how, how how this guy you know really held himself after the interview you can imagine being a male CSGO pro out there losing to a female in the scene I don't mean to say she's a bad player but you know gave her the matter of the fact that she was just a really good player and I never really realized how well he did his interview in terms of you guys have to imagine the flack he got not only from the community but also from other pro players out there for losing this matchup so here's a sneak peek at Katie himself and how he held himself in the interview and he is now going to be returning to the major for the first time in four years and I cannot wait could not be more excited for the guy, but here's the interview of him after losing to Giuliano. Back to this result, or did you think you'd be able to take her out? Okay, there's many points I want to make right now. First of all, Romania, there's a time zone difference, one hour, I'm jet lagged. <laughs> I am completely <laughs> fucking jet lagged, okay? Not only that, I missed the hotel breakfast, so my stomach is empty, I'm, I'm out of energy, I'm drained, I am drained, okay? No. First of all, what I want to say is, I knew coming into this tournament that both Giuliano and Sass is talented. And I knew that I could lose. I know that others can lose as well. So before everyone is laughing, I'm saying it is possible and they are good. 
But um, I mean, I don't know. I'm. I knew I was gonna lose the rifle. Uh, I'm gonna lose at every tournament this <laughs> time. Just wait for it. If I get ten rounds on the rifle map, I'm gonna be uh, celebrating. But op was pretty fine. Expected that to win. Pistol. I'm gonna say she was warm there, like holy guacamole. It's not even like I was okay. I was whiffing a bit, but she was also hitting some nutty shots. And very last in today's episode of CSK News, I do want to warn you guys for the future of this week. I'll probably have one more episode of CSK News, and then Friday and Saturday, or maybe even Sunday, I'll have pre-recorded episodes. One will be actually an apartment tour. The other is going to be a kind of a, a talking slash a rant special video about maybe CSGO Battle Royale in the future. It's a very good video, but I have to pre-record those because I will be going to Chicago for my birthday to visit my sister. So hope you guys understand. I do apologize for that. There'll be one more news episode episode this week and then two pre-recorded episodes of some other content for the channel but I hope you guys all enjoy that but also very lastly and very importantly out there in CSGO as we have approached the face it major and face it major still debating right now whether to use Twitch or YouTube or Facebook for their streaming platform and more importantly for the future of ESL clone their major in 2019 it will be our first major likely in January we're gonna have that major in 2019 they are still deciding what to host as their platform right now the big debate going back and forth do we choose YouTube do we choose Twitch do we choose Facebook and the view Viewership numbers are out for ESL Cologne. Thanks to Sir Scoots who responded to this. I saw it on Twitter as well. We do some official results out there for viewership of the actual event itself. Now I'm going to show you guys a screenshot on screen and you're only going to notice one big difference and that is peak viewership compared to Twitch compared to Facebook. Now also very importantly though the total viewership has not really changed. It went down just a tiny tiny bit and also a good point to make by Sir Scoots and other people out there is the fact that ESL Cologne viewership for 2018 could be increased because Facebook does not show users who are actually not logged in to the service itself. So that's really good news out there for CSGO, but also very bad news because you can actually clearly see the difference between Facebook viewers total wise as well as Twitch viewers total wise and the platform separately. I know it maybe, maybe doesn't matter. As long as you get sponsors and they see the total viewership, maybe it doesn't matter to them, but also I think it does matter a little bit to us as a community out there because the majority of us now, myself included, I now just go to HLTV and I watch the ESL streams through there. What do you guys do? And wouldn't that matter for the platform itself? Would Facebook maybe not want to back out or maybe would ESL or, or, or you know these other organizers out there maybe consider Facebook not to be a viable option I'm just not really sure how the background of this kind of stuff really works so no total viewership has not increased but I think the main problem right now is compatibility wise in terms of the chat and of course interaction so far the struggles the Facebook stream has seen so far I think as a community we can all probably vote that Facebook is down down the totem pole we have the OG twitch we have YouTube who was second to that and I think we have Facebook all the way down there as our preference but again I really can't blame ESL right now as long as the option is always still there uh, in terms of ESL and face it being through HLTV's website I'm not really gonna complain anymore but if in the future for some reason I'm really kind of surprised that HLTV is allowed to do this embed those Facebook streams or ESL streams in them and if in the future that's not allowed anymore then I will actually file a complaint uh, of some sort what do you guys think about that should Facebook streams continue I for one think no in the future they can be improved and maybe once they're improved I'll go back to them but as of right now I would love to see the return of twitch that was uh, the only real website out there that I really was using full time even when ESL Pro League went to YouTube I kind of slacked off and wasn't really watching Pro League so I think more importantly than the major in the future the Pro League the ECS that's really what matters where that's actually going to be streamed on a platform that we can actually go to easily because I think right now the big problem we're seeing is newcomers and even old comers are finding a really hard time a hard enough time where they're not even going to go watch it if they can't actually find the stream on Facebook so hope you guys all enjoy my name is Jake like you hope you guys all enjoy today's episode of CSK News if you guys did feel free to leave a comment down below if not well well then, uh, bye.